Hey, what's up, you guys? Second Q&A for me. First one for you. You're never going to get to see the other one I did. Uh, it took too long. Answered too many questions. So instead, I pretty much left all the questions you guys asked to sort of stew in my head for a few days and drive me nuts. And I'm going to try and just unify everything into something that I think is what you guys are actually asking most often, but is asked in specific questions as opposed to a more general thing. So really what you guys ask most often about is the path. What do you do when there's no one to teach you, you don't know how it's done, you gotta do it on your own, and there's just so many options. So really that's, I think, the biggest thing. So people ask about courses, people ask about specifics of this or that, and really that's just part of the big thing. How do you navigate the big picture? If you get the big picture down, you can always do the small details. Uh, I'm gonna let a little study play for you guys while I'm talking, so it's not just my head. Let me know if it's distracting and I won't do it again. So in this video, I wanna give you guys some tools. I wanna make it easier for you to go through whatever you're going through. And I just wanna say that just because you know some kids can do this and they can arguably do it better than some grown-ups if you happen to be one of those grown-ups I wanna say just because kids can do it doesn't mean it's simple children don't do simple things only um, all that means to me is that it's something that's so natural that even a kid wants to do it you know if you show a child probably 98 percent of the things that grown-ups have to do I think it will probably not like any of those. It will be very few things that a kid would want to do. So just because kids participate in this thing that we're doing as well, that doesn't make it a simple thing or a foolish thing to do. So art is seen as something that's um, useless by most people. And your parents are, or your peers are most likely wondering what the hell you're doing with your time. but. I just want to say to you that whatever it is that you're wanting to do, there's no one else that can do the same thing that you want to do. So about a year ago when I first started a sketchbook online and when I was just starting out, so zero skill and everything else, completely unknown what's going to happen in the future, if I'm going to be able to do this or not. But when I started it, all I wanted to do then, like, my sort of dream wasn't to draw cool stuff. My thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to make videos to show people stuff and help people out. So that was the drive for me, sort of. That was the most important thing. And um, I just want to ask you, like, what's important to you? Why are you doing what you're doing? Because a lot of the questions, again, that I get... I get bored, how do I not play video games, how do I do this, how, how do I just sit and do it? Well, when you think a lot about why you're doing it and when you see potential in it and when you really go in it, that's when you won't really have the luxury of being bored. You'll have too much work you have to do. How much of what you do is traditional, how much of what you do is digital, and this is where the path thing comes in. Basically, there is no linear way that you get from one place to the other. So I've never done traditional. When I started, I didn't even start with drawing. I started with photography. And then from photography, I sort of went into Photoshop because that was interesting to me. I'd never done it before. I never knew anything about uh, picture making. I never had any artist friends or anyone that does anything with pictures and stuff. I've never ever been exposed to any of it, and I was never interested either. I got into it not doing traditional, I didn't do any pencil, I didn't do any paints, I still haven't touched paints, I have some oils around here somewhere, which I'm gonna take out one day, I suppose, and I do wanna try them, but there is no one way that you can do this thing, um, there definitely isn't a linear progression of you should do this for this many weeks and this for this many months and then you're ready to do the next thing. Some people structure it that way, that's definitely something that like ateliers and art schools do. They try to simplify the process and, and make it so that many people can go through the same thing and get predictable results. But being self-taught to me 
is not a disadvantage at all. I've always hated school with a passion. I hated university too, which was just the same. I didn't learn a lot. The people that taught me didn't know a lot. A lot of it was wasting time. So for you out there that are self-taught, that are thinking um, that you're probably way behind everyone else and that also you're going to have a much tougher time, I can say that you're going to have a tough time, definitely, because you're going to have a lot more to deal with. But I don't think that that's a disadvantage, though. Um, having to do this on my own and having to learn to struggle and all that, I think that's showed me so many things about myself and just about how to navigate problems in the world and everything else. Like, to me, that's been the most difficult thing I've done so far with zero security, zero predictable outcome, zero success chances, sort of, just because when I started... If you ever look at something I've done, one of the first things, just the stick figures and stuff. At that same age, 22, 3, Jean-Léon Jerome already had things that were being exhibited. And I think he got medals for it and all that stuff. Well, at the same point, I'm making stick figures. Arguably good stick figures. but So there is no one way that you go about this. The path is not linear either. It's not just one thing that you do. It's... It's a winding sort of road at all times and you go down different alleys and you turn back and then you go down another one and that's the way you do it and that's how you figure it out. Um, to make this into a practical thing for you, I want to say that being self-taught means that you have access to all of your time that otherwise could be wasted by a tutor that doesn't know what they're doing or is not interested or the myriad of other things that could happen with people that teach. They might not be able to empathize with their student. They might have learned themselves so long ago that they can't understand what you're not understanding. So many times when I've asked people that know how to do things to show me how to do something, I've found that they're completely unable to... They'll, they'll show you over and over, but they have no idea how they're doing it. So they're unable to teach it to anyone because they have no ways of translating their implicit knowledge, meaning what's in their head and has been ingrained so well that it's not verbal anymore. Like it's just something, you, it's like breathing. How do you explain to someone how to breathe if they've never breathed before? It's, it's a heart, like you just, I don't know, you pump your chest, or, but that, that doesn't do it. I don't know, try something else. So a lot of people don't communicate that very well. Um, another thing is you have access to the best teachers in the world at pretty much unbeatable prices. I'm like a car, car salesman. So, unbeatable prices, folks. All courses, 50% off. I will say that courses on their own are not the thing that are going to get you to where you need to go. I spent a whole year, or even more than a year maybe, before I started practicing, so before I started this whole thing last year, beginning of last year, I spent more than a year most likely watching things and very rarely doing. Um, the schools we come from, universities, colleges, whatever, they are all very heavy into read this and then read 50 other things and then come back and tell me a little bit about all of them. And that's all you got to do. You never have to apply anything. So my way of learning before was get 50 books, read all of them, understand everything, done. And then when I would go and try and do something, it would not work at all. I would be able to look at something and deconstruct it like, yes, I can see the tone he's using there. That gives that lovely impression of luminance. And then this in the corner, that's the symbol of, I can see all that stuff. But then when it comes to me doing anything, I couldn't do a cube. Or if I did a cube, it would be a crappy cube and it will be a cube that will piss me off for a long time. It's not in what you watch. It's not in what you get from external sources. It's more what you do with what you get. So I would say I, I had a perspective book a while ago and it said that the proper, the proper ratio between theory and practice is 1 to 50. So if you read a page it's pretty much 50 pages of drawing. I would say maybe you need to do more than 50 pages 
but that's about accurate. So I spent a year looking at stuff, did not improve very much. Then I spent a year doing stuff, still looking, but doing more, improved tremendously. Second year, I find myself looking at things multiple times, over and over at the same thing, and then doing more. So I, would, I wouldn't watch a whole course, I might watch just something to get an idea from it, but I wouldn't commit the time to watch the whole course because a whole course, basically, if you watch a two-hour course, that to me entails, at the very least, a week, maybe even a month, maybe even a year, and for other things, a, a, a lifetime maybe to finish. I have books that I've read, and just every time I get back to them, I ha I sort of I add a layer of meaning on top. So, things based knowledge that you get from other people is not something that just goes into your head like someone gives you an idea and it's in your head after that. It doesn't get transmitted like that. You sort of if you have an idea from someone, that one idea to sink into your head in the way that it's going to sink into your head, that's going to take a lot of practice from you. Nothing but practice will make anything sink into your head. So the way really to learn anything or to do anything, since some of the questions pertain to, you know, just particular things about how to do something with drawing. And mostly to me, those are questions of deconstructing problems. So the question of what do you do and in what order do you study things is the same type of problem solving you need to apply to your picture making. So since you're self-taught, since you have the advantage of your time, since you have the advantage of people like Fang Zhu, of Scott Robertson, of all the other awesome people on YouTube doing things for you for free that you would otherwise either have to, I don't know, if you're from a different country, you're going to have to move continents to go and study with those people if you even get a chance to sit with them, meaning if you get to do exams or whatever it is they have, and then you also have to pay tuition. So there's so many things that you would have to fulfill before you have the privilege of being taught by them. Now anyone can just go and click and look at stuff and learn. If it was that easy, though, that you, ju that you just watch stuff and then you know obviously everyone would be doing it and there's only few people at least that I know of that have done it um, to a really successful degree um, I think there's gonna be more and more as this internet thing goes and as we try and help each other out and make videos for each other and keep encouraging each other and stuff I think there's gonna be more and more people so it's not just something that you look and it becomes part of you a lot of it comes down to practice and it also comes down to your ability of thinking about problems. So the questions you need to answer for yourself with how you go about your studying is, first of all, what are you interested in? Why are you doing what you're doing? If you're just going about and looking at everyone else's stuff, feeling bad about your stuff and wanting to do what they're doing, then you're going to spend a lot of time being unproductive because you'll just be stuck in negative thought and I'm not good enough and they're so much better and all that. One thing I want to say is when I started and when I wanted to do videos to help people, I saw a lot of other guys that were much better than me, even people that were just learning, they were just starting, but they were better. And I was thinking, well, what's the point of me getting better because you know they can already do what I want to do why don't they just do it and then no one did the exact thing that I wanted to do and I don't think anyone else is gonna do it and that's why it's the same thing for you no one is gonna do what you want to do so whatever idea you have in your head no one else will do that so that's the value of you pursuing your studies that's the value of you doing what you're doing even if you don't no one I in in my daily life, I don't go around thinking all the things that I might be saying in a video, at least not all the time. I try to remember them, I try to remind myself of them daily, but you're not able to go and have confidence and have faith that you're going to be able to pull this off at all times. There's going to be those dark times when you just have to push through or you just, I wouldn't say take a step back, but 
reevaluate what you're doing. To get back to the practical aspect, you have to think about what you want to do. And then you have to think, what are the things that will help you do that thing? Meaning, now we're getting to the practical part of if you want to do compelling portraits of people, then you can think about, first of all, who are the people that you want to portray? Just so you have a clear idea in your mind of the meaning of what you're doing. Because without meaning, that's when I think most people get discouraged. Is when, like, oh, there's no point. Everyone's doing it. Uh, it's, I, I don't know why I'm doing it. I'm going to go and do something else. Or your parents tell you you should do something else. If someone tells you you should do something else and you agree with them, that means that you had not invested enough meaning in what you were trying to do. And someone else's meaning pretty much gets in the place of your meaning. It supersedes yours. So they just sort of, my meaning just over your meaning, my meaning just takes over yours because yours was just fickle. So you need to think about in practical terms why you're doing what you want to do. There are ways to make behavior addictive just in the same way that video games um, are addictive and you just get a rush from playing and you get to progress and you get to have significance and speak to people. This is a Tony Robbins idea of the things you need to make something um, addictive. The same thing can be done for a beneficial thing. Addiction is not a bad thing. Addiction is misapplied energy. So if you manage to get yourself addicted to productive things, you'll be a productive person. So in terms of practical things, again, that you can do, what are you trying to do? Why are you doing it? And once you've answered those questions, then you go from big shape to small shape, just in the same way as drawing or painting. Big shape, big picture, smaller pictures. Fit things in together so they work together and tweak them all the time so that they work together better. Once you've answered those questions, then you have a much narrower path. All right, I know what I want to do. I know why I'm doing it. What are the practical things now that will help me? If I want to do portraits and I'm not able to produce a likeness, well, first of all, that means a problem in accuracy. You need to work on your accuracy. Second problem is if you've not done a lot of drawing or painting, then your values are most likely off too. So two things so far, work on accuracy, work on your values. Values to be able to render things and to make things have form. Accuracy, so you put everything in the right place and you have a likeness. Okay, well I've done those. My pictures sort of look like photos now. What can I do? Well, now you have to start editing stuff. So if they look like photos, that means that you either duplicate everything and you've learned to copy very well. That's That was my first step. Once you've started doing that, then you start thinking, well, I don't want them to look like photographs, so that means that I should edit them somehow. Meaning, I, I have the control of being able to think about what I'm going to put in, what I'm going to leave out. So you can start doing that now. How do you make something more compelling? What is telling the story that you want to tell? What is not telling the story that you want to tell? What can you leave out? And anything that's not telling your story, leave it out. And just give it a try. Maybe that's not the way to go. Maybe that doesn't give you the picture that you want to have. Those are all just suggestions. And you tweak those suggestions. Maybe you want to even push it further. And instead of leaving stuff out, maybe you want to put more stuff in. Or how about if you just exaggerate everything and you make it like into a hyper photograph where you just exaggerate every pore if you could. And what if that gives you a gritty sort of feeling? Does that reflect better the person that you've taken a picture of? in the street, let's say, and you want to portray them and their situation, is this what you want to do? It's just questions like this where you think about your process, you think about your meaning, and you go back to it constantly, and you work on it, and you rework it, and you fine-tune it to what you're doing. That's really the only way. I can sit and suggest courses, and I will say plenty of good people out there. Um, definitely check out Feng Zhu. Um, Scott Robertson, Ron Lemon, um, Nathan Fawkes, um, Jeremy Vickery. These are just, um, they're mostly just like courses, like a few hour long sort of lecture. If, you, if you're the type of person that needs some more help with discipline and time management and stuff, then things perhaps like Noah Bradley's Art Camp or Darkens Mentorship. They are, I think, 12 week long courses or they just basically put you on a track 
and you just get to work through some problems. So if you're having problems with um, discipline or just you know getting to work regularly or you need that extra push, those are probably a good other way to go. I can't really comment on either of them. I've not had the opportunity to take um, either. I definitely do want to take courses at some point. I just don't have the means to do that now. A few other things before I close. Um, I'm going to have to do a lot of these. I either ramble too much or I have too much to say. I can't really tell what it is. Um, one thing I do want to say is I wanted to take a course this year and I was leaning toward Darkin's course. More than any, apart from the fact that he's a great artist, I've also been on his blog and I know that his wife, um, she has some sort of cancer and you know it's a really terrible thing to read. She has her own page that they've done and she's writing about it and stuff. And I was really leaning towards his course just because, you know, I remember him saying in blogs and videos and stuff how he works a hundred plus hours a week. And I can understand why now um, having someone close to you have to deal with something like that. It's probably a nightmare thing to have to deal with. So I was probably going to go for his course just because I wanted to give money to him and support him and his wife. And really what I want to close with is that a lot of people, especially I think in the art industry, have the mindset of, you know, there's a lot of hate going around and this the guy is good, this guy is bad, and then he's a jerk and whatever, and uh, the stuff he makes, that's all crap and like, whatever. Um, I want to say that that um, sort of mind state of, I have to compete with everyone and I need to crush everyone and be better and all that stuff. You do have to be better, I believe. You do have to try every day to be better. Better than compete if you have to. But I mean compete in a benign way, I think. Um, compete in a way that as you see you're getting better than people, try and then pull them forward. So, you know, just turn around, pick them up and show them what you did because then you want to get better because that person's going to say, hey, thank you so much, like that really helped me. And then you're like, wow, cool, what else could I do? Whereas if you're being a jerk to everyone, then really that's not gonna feed anyone else and then not, they're not gonna feed you anything either. I mean, anytime that anyone snaps at anyone else, that's pretty much, you know, that kills both people's um, urge to do anything. So if it's not productive, there's no point in doing it. Art is, whatever we're doing, even if it's the silliest thing, it's all basically making something, it's creative, it's communicating, it's giving other people something that they can see and you can either make them laugh, you can make them think, you can make them sad, or you can make them indifferent. It really all just depends on what it is that's in the picture, but it's something that to the core connects to other people. If it makes them indifferent, it's just because they think they've seen it too many other times, it doesn't really strike a chord with them. With someone else, it will though. So as long as you keep putting out things that are going to be helpful to other people and are going to be beneficial, I think you're going to be making the world a better place and you should keep doing what you're doing. Even if it seems childish to you or anyone else, there's no one else that's going to do what you could do. Keep getting better every day. Tweak everything that you can find about yourself, about your process, about you as a person. Everything that's bad let let go of that whether it's habits whether it's in your thinking and yeah send me more questions so i can make a complete mess of them and make inane videos like this one i hope you guys have enjoyed it or at least part of it and i hope to be seeing you around see you later